It's the little things that make a difference. Hey guys, welcome back to another Random Distractions Home Theater Update video. In my last video, I mentioned that there was finally a fix found for the Buckeye Purify amp uh, that I purchased. Um, and so I received the parts and swapped them out and I wanted to share what happened. To keep everyone in the loop, uh, Buckeye Amps made a Purify amp and they sent it to Audio Science Review for testing. In that review, it was found that the distortion levels were rising uh, a lot higher than what they do in other Purify amps. And so it got a final uh, conclusion of not recommended. By the time I had heard of this, uh, my amp was already on order, but it hadn't shipped yet. However, despite the higher distortion levels, it wasn't really audible in normal operation. Uh, so Dylan from Buckeyes gave uh, people that had purchased the amps the option of waiting until the fix was found and then send it out, or to go ahead and send it out now and then provide a fix later on. I decided to go ahead with the order since I had already been waiting a while. Just to give you an idea, I had placed the order back on November 9th of 2022 and the, then the review came out uh, December 23rd uh, of 2022. With my order moving forward, I did finally receive the amp on January 13th, 2023. Then on February 28th, I received an email from Dylan saying, hey, we, we found the fix. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and send out the parts, uh, which he did give two options. Uh, one was to send out the parts and do uh, most of the work myself, or he would send out more of a plug and play option with the uh, parts all put together and I would just need to swap them out. I went ahead and go, went with the first option as I figured that might be you know, something interesting to try. Uh, and I did receive the parts on March 13th. So what was the fix? I'll put a link in the description to the page that explains it, but it all came down to this, the binding post connection tab. They found that the tab was made out of steel, which is a poor conductor and can cause interference. Uh, so the replacement parts would be made out of brass. Comparing the two, there is a difference to how it feels and it does look a little thicker as well. Before I fixed it and before I show the process on how I fixed it, uh, I decided I should probably do a little sound test first. I put my microphone about a foot away from my front left tower speaker. First I started with a little pink noise uh, so you could hear that the speaker was working and then I stopped that and raised the volume. I realized though that it only went up to negative five which was the limit that I had placed. Um, so I removed that limit and then went back and raised the volume all the way up. Here's that clip. Not sure how it will come across on YouTube, uh, but listening to the recording, it just seems to be the ambient noise from the room, uh, so I really didn't hear anything in the recording. In person, from my seating position, I didn't hear anything from the speakers. All right, so now it's time for the fix. So I set everything up on my table, and of course I have the amp, the package with replacement parts from Buckeyes, my electronic repair tool set, and a box cutter. First, opening up the parts bag, there was a separate baggie and nothing else inside. Inside the baggie were new female connectors, connection tabs, and nuts. I set all those aside and went and grabbed a small piece of carpet to set the amp on. It looked like the screws I needed to remove were on the side, so I took those off. There was four per side for a total of eight screws. This allowed the cover to come straight off. Looking inside, it looks like there's enough parts to replace the connectors to the speaker terminals. The female connectors were a little snug, but they were able to come off with a little force. The new female connectors were all stuck together, so broke them apart. The next step was to take the nuts off, but my tool set didn't have the right size. I went and got a socket wrench, extension, and a 932nd socket. I also grabbed my wire cutter crimping tool. 
Unfortunately, I ran into an issue with my socket wrench getting stuck, and after fiddling with it for a little while, I decided to just use the extension, which worked out. I removed the first one and replaced the parts to it. I moved the camera closer to show it a little bit better for the second one. I then just repeated this for the rest of them. Next was to cut the existing female connectors and strip the wire. If you are wondering, I used the 14 gauge hole to strip the wire. Unfortunately, here's where I ran into my biggest problem. So the crimping tool that I had looked like it could work, but I had a ton of trouble getting it to work. And I tried to see if I could remove the cable, but it was on there pretty tight. After some struggle, I finally got it crimped, but it looked pretty bad. Hopefully this won't cause any issues in the end. Because of how bad it looked, I decided that I would purchase a different crimping tool before moving forward with the rest. I found one on Amazon and it would arrive the next day. The next day, the crimping tool came and here's what it looked like. It was a ratcheting version and looked like I first needed to place the female connector in the right spot and then crimp. So I cut the next female connector and stripped the wire. I placed the new female connector into the crimping tool and crimped the wire. <laughs> wow, what a difference. Here's what both of them look like. With the time it took me to do that first one, I was able to do the remaining five for about that same time. With the new connectors on, I plugged them into the tabs. Everything was all set. Time to put the cover back on, so got my screwdriver and screwed in the eight screws. You know, it really helps to have the right tool for the job. I really thought that my crimping tool would work because uh, it seemed to have the right uh, crimping portions of it, but I just could not get it to work. So I uh, was glad that I only had to wait one day for that other one to come in. Um, I did go back and crimp that first one with that same tool just in case, uh, you know, it was still kind of loose and, uh, and would make a, at least a better connection even though it didn't look that great. The next thing was to run a similar test as before. Um, and luckily, even though I had to wait a day for that crimping tool, I was able to leave my microphone in the exact same spot. And uh, I forgot <laughs> what the volume was set for the noise level at the beginning. So this one's gonna be a little bit lower than before, uh, but that doesn't really matter. It's just more to show that yes, they were playing and then I stopped and so they should be silent. Um, and I still had that limit removed. So I was able to go all the way to the max, which was plus 10 on the Anthem. And here's that clip. Again, not sure how well that comes across on YouTube. Uh, listening to the recording, um, I, the only thing I seem to hear is the ambient noise uh, coming through the microphone um, and not really hearing anything else. The one thing I did do different this time though was I left the Anthem at the plus 10 and then I walked up to the speaker and uh, the closer I got, it wasn't until I was like right about there uh, that I actually did hear some noise from the tweeter uh, at the plus 10 uh, on volume on the Anthem. I then lowered it back down to negative five, which is usually the max that I'm willing to go uh, when I'm listening to it myself. Um, and when I did that, I could not hear anything from uh, being that close to the speaker. 
Regardless though, if anything was else was playing through that speaker <laughs> besides nothing, uh, I don't think that you would uh, you know hear anything at all besides what you know you're playing. So was it worth the fix? Personally, I didn't hear a difference between before and after the fix. Um, I'm grateful though that they were still able to provide a fix and sent out the parts to be able to, you know, to do that. Um, so at least now if they rerun the test, hopefully it'll come back to be within spec. As I had mentioned in my first Buckeye Amps uh, review, uh, even though it's just a one-man band uh, over there, he really stands behind his product. And so I'm glad that he was willing to send out a fix or find the fix. And, um, you know, even though it doesn't really seem to cause any issues, at least in my uh, personal experience with the amp. Well, that's all that I have for this video. I would definitely appreciate a like, of course, on this one. And make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next one drops. And until then, I hope you have a good one.